morning guys. So this morning dad and I are going to go over to our house and hook on to our makeshift nurse tender trailer that has about 500 to 550 gallon of extra thiosol in it from when we planted beans and used thiosol as our starter. So we're going to set up an irrigator and fertigate the rest of that out and we're hoping if the wind dies down we're going to finish spraying corn today and we've got some parts that were shipped they were supposed to be here on Wednesday. We ordered them Monday and paid two-day shipping, and they're just getting here, hopefully today. They say they're supposed to be here at 2.48 today, and they left Indianapolis at 5 a.m. this morning. Hopefully they get here today and we can get the applicator completely finished up, because we're going to be hitting it pretty hard here starting the first part of next week Why dropping this corn. Roy G150, 40 acres, 500 gallon, or no, 12.5 gallon per acre, and at what, three tenths you have it set at, so 11.7 hours. 28.5%, that's 42.74 gallons per hour. So Dad's going to go start the pivot, that way we have power back here, that way we can go through and prime this pump and get it set and dialed in where we need it. And where we plug in this pump at to on the well is right here. There's a little plug there. We take that plug out and we put our injection nozzle in and we hook that hose up to the injection nozzle there, that adapter, and it injects it right into the well stream and into the pivot then. And then we're able to fertigate this whole 40 acres here. We normally pump into this tank and pull out of that tank, but because it's already on the tank on the trailer here we figured it's just easier to pull out of this tank instead of wasting time and cleaning that tank out which eventually we will we'll end up hooking up a garden hose to that plug back there and uh, rinsing that tank out that way when we do uh, future fertigation applications this summer we just got to back the tender down here and pump off into that tank and just set the uh, pump back here like this and pull out of that tank there then when we're fertigating
fourth of that. Yeah. So fourth to five hundred to come down here at So I'm going to finish setting this pivot here. I'm actually going to make a new stop and have it go past uh, the pivot lane a little bit. We leave that pivot lane because uh, it's cheaper for us to park it on a builder strip there. And plus it's easier for us in the summer uh, when having to uh, fertigate. We can just easily get back there and not tear up any corn. So it's just cheaper that way and a lot easier on us. So we're putting this on at about 12 and a half gallons of the acre. There's roughly about 500 gallon in there. And typically we have to have the pump set a little bit higher than what the normal setting is. And like I said, this is just carryover that we had from bean starter. So this is just uh, uh, a field that we figured that this would work really nice on. And uh, eventually here next week we will be wide dropping this. We're just waiting on some parts like I said. So after this pivot goes around, we're putting this on at about 3 tenths. So this will take about 11.7 to 12 hours to go around. And uh, after it goes around, we'll set it for about half inch to uh, six tenths and let it go around once more. So they had to spray the last of the corn over at the river and we will be officially done spraying corn and uh, we'll start on beans sometime next week. I'm going to work on putting orifices and all these Y drops. Currently we only have half the orifices and uh, the other half are supposedly coming at 2.48 today. So hopefully they come today and uh, we can finish putting these on. So this is a 17 row applicator. So actually this drop hose here is unnecessary because this is actually going to be on the very outside row. The first corn row would be right here. So technically this drop hose needs to come off and we're going to put a plug in here and the orifices go right in these, right in here. So I gotta go through and put all the orifices in or at least whatever ones we've got on hand right now and the other half are supposed to be coming hopefully today and uh, we'll work on putting the gauge wheels back on uh, because we still have to extend those out which we will get done today and hopefully if those parts come today uh, we will be able to finish this applicator up and probably end up putting sight gauges on the tanks in the uh, tender because that's also what's coming with the orifices <laughs> Twelve twenty right now. Uh, I got the okay to go turn the irrigator back on again on the wheat. That irrigator last night shut off for some reason. Some GPS issue. So I'm headed down there because a neighbor had a cow that he needed to move a bull, and uh, he got the bull moved. And he just texted me that it's okay to go turn that on. So I'm gonna go turn that on and swing by and check the thiosol tank. That's about right where it needs to be. 
because it's sloped, so it's about 300 and here over 350 gallon. It's about right where it needs to be. Awesome. From my understanding, it was stopped this way, headed straight north, but it's actually headed to uh, the northeast. So I don't know why uh, it stopped over there. It's never stopped over there because of GPS. I have a feeling the electric point down here because the case converter is actually on. I don't know why. That's weird. Well, okay, let's try this again. I have a feeling that was not a glitch on GPS. It had to be a glitch on uh, the electric. So let's go ahead and set the direction. Yep, delay, water on. Should be a restart delay. Okay, go ahead and start it. Set the stop to 70. And putting on eight tenths, and it's about halfway, close to halfway around. Uh, I'd say it's gonna take about 16 hours yet for it to get up to the stop again. Let this get up to pressure, and uh, it should turn on here in the next couple of minutes. And there we go, up to pressure, everything looks good, no plug nozzles, end guns on. Awesome. Let's hope we don't have any more issues. So this morning, Dad and I have been looking at some corn for a customer to diagnose some issues that are going on out there. Yesterday evening, uh, we ran over to Harbor Freight, which Dad and I have actually never been to Harbor Freight before. And uh, we're gonna, we ended up getting some half inch air hose here. And we have a second airline run over here. That way, if we ever wanted to put uh, an air hose set up here, we had that option here from the shop air compressor. And we have a one inch Chicago pneumatic impact that we've never really had set up before. And uh, we're going to get this set up and run it off of a half inch air hose and set it all up right here. And uh, we've got 100 feet of air hose. And the reason why we're doing all this right now is because the three quarter won't even take off the bolts for the duals on here off the hubs. We decided that we're going to go ahead and take the duals off the back of the 8530. We're going to do this because uh, we feel this is going to help eliminate uh, less corn getting run over. We're going to do that this afternoon and we also got the gauge wheel arms all done and the paint's drying on those so we're gonna throw those on, take the duals off, and uh, basically tomorrow we're hoping to go ahead and start Y dropping. We're just waiting on orifices so once those orifices come in we're gonna go ahead and throw those on and uh, first thing in the morning dad and I are gonna go over to uh, Malden get a load of fertilizer and uh, we'll leave those sight gauges off till like Wednesday, maybe Tuesday, because I guess we're supposed to get a half inch of rain on Tuesday. But at least we want to get going on Y dropping tomorrow. That way uh, I get a feel for what we need to do and uh, kind of get broke in on running this because this is a whole new learning curve uh, on applying our fertilizer side dressing wise. to the west. Oh, around. Just right there. Gotta go down a little 
bit, I think. Well, we got the gauge wheels set. We were trying to figure out how many stops we are going to need because this applicator only came with enough stops, at least for what we're wanting to do with the Y drops, for one cylinder. So we'll have to run over to John Deere, get some more stops for this cylinder, and hopefully tomorrow, granted if the orifices come in, hopefully, <laughs> uh, we will hopefully start Y dropping tomorrow. We're not going to worry about the sight gauges, which that's what's coming with the orifices from Jensen Equipment over in Illinois. And uh, we'll put those sight gauges on probably Tuesday because we're supposed to get a half inch of rain Tuesday, which would be definitely really nice to have. We are really getting dry in our area. So uh, we actually have the 40 on the corner pivot running at about five tenths right now or a half inch. And uh, that'll finish sometime one, two in the morning. So hopefully we catch a rain Tuesday and we don't have to turn the pivots on on shins because I'm afraid tomorrow the tomato guys are going to be telling us to kick that pivot on on shins if we uh if it doesn't look like it's going to rain on tuesday which we have to go through both of those pivots and make sure the nozzles are clean and ready to go so probably tomorrow we'll end up doing that just be on the safe side and eventually uh we have to get that pivot over and dan's ready to go because i'm afraid if we don't catch rain tuesday there's going to be a boatload of guys uh irrigating besides us so Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Hopefully tomorrow will be the first day that we officially start Y dropping. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.